Hello and welcome to another AIC video. First and foremost, please excuse the dirty room I am in. I did ask my kids to clean their room before I came in here and this is what I got. Um, so this video is on bunk beds. So we recently moved to a new house and this house had two master bedrooms. And so I'm putting three of my girls into the second master bedroom. They have their own private bathroom and walk-in closet that they share. Uh, but one thing that they wanted more of is some personal space in the room. And so we decided to get them some loft beds. It gives them just a little bit of space. Uh, we'll probably be moving like this dresser under there or maybe putting a bean bag or something and a light for them to sit under here and read with. Um, it had them wrapped with sheets um, so they can have some private quiet space. So we picked these up. They're about $300 on Amazon. Uh, the brand on them is Max and Lily, but I can't find that anywhere on the box, packaging um, or anything else that would give you an idea of what it is. Um, here are the instructions. It is actually one of the better beds I've built. Um, the hardware is really nice and sturdy hardware. Instructions are really clear and easy to read. And I'll kind of walk you through uh, each step as we go through it. All right, as we get into steps kind of one and two of the instructions, it tells you to do one side and then the other. As you can see, I have it all done right now. Did this for a couple reasons. Um, I found that if I did the one side and tightened them down, it was a lot harder to line up the other side. Also, it means I don't have to get up and down <laughs> nearly as often being 40 this year. Uh, my knees and my back are feeling it. So uh, I, I'm just doing both uh, at the same time, both sides. Uh, it's easier to find the screw holes, get the screws in, and then tighten everything down in one go. One thing to note is this bar here, which is the number two on, has an arrow pointing up. It's important that that is oriented correctly with the arrow pointing to up. Um, there's four little holes there. Those will become important later and I will go over that step when we get there. All right, so we have the header and the footer assembled now. And you can see that they're a little bit different. Uh, the big difference is on the footer, you have these screw holes and they do need to be oriented in the correct direction, so pointing up. And what these are for, for the steps, there's actually steps you're gonna screw in as one of the last steps. <laughs> um, and then you have the number two with the arrow pointing up and the four holes. And four holes, again, there we'll cover that um, when we get to that step. But it is kind of one of the reasons why I did buy this bed, which I'll go over here shortly. All right, so we got to and finished what I think is the hardest piece, which is putting this in right here. Because once you have this one in, everything kind of holds together and it becomes a lot easier. So what I do is I just hold this with my right hand underneath um, between the wall and this, and then just where I have just enough reach around to put the screws in and put these in. And then the, I do the other side. Now, this is where I once again, deviate from the instructions. So the instructions tell you to put this side in and then to mirror it on this side. And I did that with the first one. And that was really annoying because I had to keep crawling under this bar to work on this side in the room that I'm in. So, because there's not enough room really to pull it out uh, the way I want to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna do this one, then I'm gonna do the top bar, then I'm gonna attach the piece that goes here and on that side, and then I'm going to do these two pieces. I found that to be a lot easier for me. If following the instructions is the easier view, go for it. But I'm gonna do these two, then this middle piece, and then these two out, outside pieces. So anyways, so what I do now that I have this piece on that I can assemble the next pieces is I'll just put in a single bolt on one side and then I'll do uh, the other side. So say I put a bolt in here to hold this side on, then I'll go to that side and I'll do those two bolts and I'll come back and put in this one properly and then pull this one out a little bit to stick the nut in there and then tighten it. Now, it, they tell you to not tighten these all the way. You can see it's still very loose and wiggly. That's just so that way everything gets aligned together at once. If you try to tighten these up before you have all the pieces in place, it will make 
um, it very difficult to finish. So you want to make sure that you're just tightening them so they're not going to fall apart. I do tighten them as tight as I can with my fingers, basically, and that seems to be plenty loose enough to put it together. Now I have these two pieces on. I'm going to put this on. This is for a crossbar that goes across the middle. So let's get that on there. All right, so we have the crossbar in place, and this is kind of a good time to talk about why this specific bed. So um, there's lots of loft bed options, and even among this one, there's a few different feature sets that you can get. So you can get one with like shelves or drawers down here. Uh, we went with this one for two big reasons. One, we wanted to be able to put dressers or like I said, bean bags and stuff underneath the bed frame. So that way they can have their own space. Um, we're thinking like the Ikea cubes um, to go under here. The other reason why this specific bed is because of its weight limit. It has a 400 pound weight limit. Now, are any of my kids even close to 400 pounds? No. My oldest daughter is like 98 pounds soaking wet. My son, who's almost 14, is probably 125 pounds at most. So very far from being that, um, uh, that 400 pounds. But I can't tell you how many times I've come in here and seen two or even three kids on the same bed playing with their stuffed animals or whatever. Um, when they hang from the sides of it, um, when they jump off of it, you know, all the things that kids do to a bed more than just sleeping on it, I wanted that extra strength in the bed. And this is one of the few beds I saw available that had this crossbar to give it that extra weight limit. So hopefully that allows it to be a little bit of a stronger bed and a longer lasting bed. We've gone through so many beds in my life for my children for a myriad of reasons. Most of them just get to a point where I can't tighten the screws anymore. They squeak, they wiggle, and they the kids don't feel safe in them. They start to fall apart. So hopefully these are nice, strong, sturdy beds for a long time. All right, let's go ahead and get this other side on. All right, so now we come to the next part that I don't want to say is like the second hardest, but can be frustrating, is you have to screw this sled in behind these blocks here. If you look across these straps, you'll see that they're mostly tight and you see another set of blocks here. Now you can't, if I pull on this, get it behind those blocks, it'll come down over there. So what you have to do is you have to screw in one side, just that board on one side, and then you come to this other side and you have to force this board into place and then hold it in place and screw it in at the same time, fighting against the stretch that you're putting in this uh, cord here. So again, not hard, but if you're doing this by yourself, can be a little bit annoying to do. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's that. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next is screwing this into place. All right, second to last step is putting in the steps. There's just six screws that go across the two boards and they are pretty easy to go in right there. Now, if you don't have a set of these Allen wrenches, I'll put a link to these in the description. I got these ones specifically at Harbor Freight, but they're just fairly generic Allen wrenches, but oh my goodness, if you're doing all of these nuts and bolts, you a good set of Allen wrenches that have a nice handle on them makes all the difference in the world, keeps you from having a broken hand when you're done from using the super short uh, cheap ones that basically throw away ones that they include with the bed frame. All right, so this is the last step and this is kind of an optional step. Um, if you want a nice wide opening for climbing up into bed, if you want to narrow it down, they include this and it can be mounted to either side. So you kind of have to figure out which side you want to put it on before you assemble it. So I'm going to be putting it on the left side here and you have three holes in this. This one that's kind of leaning to the back actually gets bolted to the frame rail there. And those two bolts get bolted to the center piece, which again gets bolted to this, which has two, two bolts on it. Anyways, I'll pick that up in a second. And then there's these three holes back here that get a wood screw that screws just into this board here. So no pre-drilled holes or anything. They just screw right in, super easy. 
All right, there we go. Now there is one more optional thing you can do, which I'm not gonna do, but I would have my girls do. Uh, these go in the spare holes down at the bottom that are not being used. Just fill them in. They're just a cosmetic thing. And that way the girls feel like they've helped participate in some way. Now this mattress is super thick because it's actually two mattresses. So my last job is I'm actually gonna be taking these two mattresses apart. Um, my daughter whose bed this is now um, had the bottom half of a bunk bed that was super low to the ground. She wanted to be up higher off the ground. So we stacked up two mattresses together. You can see two mattresses in there. So uh, that's gonna to be too tall for this. Um, it removes the protection of having the side rail. So we're gonna get rid of the top one and she'll just have the one mattress uh, in here. So yeah, there we go. That's how it looks. Uh, I like the white um, because it's more of a white wash. It's not just painted pure white. You can just see the wood grain in there. Of the three colors, my preference is the brown. I feel like it looks better and will hold up better to wear and tear. Uh, but this, I got each daughter the color they wanted. And so that's why we have what we have. Anyway, anyways, if you have any thoughts, comments, questions, leave that down in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to answer. Thank you for watching. I hope you have an amazing day.